Beating Traffic Jams Business and academia teamed up recently to tackle an annoyance every driver faces. Traffic Jams Phantom traffic jams occur when a driver at the head of a pack of cars slows for an unknown reason. The halting action ripples to all following vehicles, causing them to also slow or stop. Ford and Vanderbilt University researchers recently tested adaptive cruise control as a means of dealing with phantom traffic jams. This system monitors traffic flow and adjusts speed accordingly. Ford says no traffic jam occurred when adaptive cruise control was switched on. Another method of reducing congestion, according to CNET, is ramp metering. This system uses traffic signals to manage the flow of traffic with vehicles waiting on an on-ramp. Some areas in Ontario, Canada use high occupancy toll lanes to lessen traffic jams. Motorists pay a premium to access these lanes in high traffic areas that are prone to congestion. But, as Toronto Transportation told Gizmodo, one of the most effective ways to get around traffic problems is mass transit. This can be anything from the likes of double-decker buses in London to effective and reliable subway systems found in cities around the world. Cars 2.0 Uber reckons you'll be able to hail a flying cab by 2026. Ride-hailing company Uber released a very intriguing white paper last month. The nearly 100-page document envisions a future where commuters jetting city to city in compact aircraft could be as normal as taking the train to work. Uber's prediction of a world with commonplace urban air transit systems relies heavily on the widespread use of small self-flying electric aircraft with vertical takeoff and landing capability. Also known as VTOL, it's most commonly used by helicopters, as well as a small number of military aircraft. Uber says a network of VTOL hubs or landing pads, dubbed Verti ports and Verti stops, could be used as terminals to ferry passengers around. Unlike cars, buses, and trains, VTOLs aren't susceptible to traffic jams or delays. They can fly from A to B with no fixed route. Uber estimates the cost of a 15-minute flight may eventually reach as low as $21. Uber expects the aircraft could fly at cruise speeds of around 150 miles per hour and won't go above 10,000 feet. The VTOL would be powered by rechargeable batteries that would maintain 30 minutes of reserve energy. Uber won't manufacture the aircraft, but predicts the market will have produced them by the early 2020s. Uber needs to collaborate with governments in the private sector for this to become a reality, so that could take longer than a decade, especially on the regulatory side. Norway's electric plane. Norwegian flyers may be traveling on aircraft like this within the next decade. According to Norwegian government information, the Alpha Electro G2 aircraft has a range of 170 kilometers and can fly for up to one hour. Manufacturer Pipistrol says the aircraft's motor has power of around 50 kilowatts with a 21 kilowatt per hour battery. This is small compared to batteries used by electric cars. Variants of the Tesla Model X electric car use the 75 and 100 kilowatt per hour batteries. Pipistrol says the aircraft can be recharged quickly at customized charging station. The plane was tested this month at Oslo Airport. Carrying two passengers, it weighed 570 kilograms and was airborne for several minutes. Reuters reports of passengers described the experience as cramped, but quieter than a normal aircraft. The country plans to operate domestic flights electric by 2025, with a view to having all electrically powered come 2040. Singapore tests out delivery by drone. Aircraft manufacturer Airbus is set to trial a drone delivery service, which if successful, could potentially lead to tests of flying passenger taxis. 
A new drone delivery service to be tested in Singapore next year will see drones being used to deliver parcels. During the trial, drones will navigate a network of delivery and pickup points across the National University of Singapore campus. These drones, also known as octocopters because of their eight blades, will fly automated on routes. These routes will be flown inside interconnecting sky corridors throughout the campus. Upon arrival, the drone will unload the parcel automatically and its recipient will be sent a delivery notification. Airbus says if the drone testing is shown to be safe, it may potentially increase acceptance of passenger flight testing in Singapore. The company has been developing an electric flying vehicle named the City Airbus for several years with the aim of reducing traffic congestion in cities. Airbus believes that people will use vehicles such as these in the future and that they could be operated via transport providers such as Uber. Would you take a ride in a flying taxi? Sound off below and let us know. A full-scale Hyperloop pod model was unveiled on Thursday, giving a glimpse into the future of Dubai transport. Virgin Hyperloop One and Dubai's Road Transport Authority developed a prototype commuter pod for the Hyperloop system, which can travel up to 1,200 kilometers per hour. Pods are divided into two classes, gold, which can seat five passengers, and silver, which seats 14. Travel time from Dubai to Abu Dhabi is currently an hour and a half by car, but will take only 12 minutes via Hyperloop. Initial tests estimate the pod can transport 10,000 people to and from Dubai every hour. To avoid motion sickness from the high speeds, the pods have no windows, but do offer entertainment and information systems in the armrests. Though the project is still under testing, the high-speed transportation system could launch as early as 2020. Life in the fast lane. Traffic in Colorado's capital city could get seriously faster in the next half decade. Headed by tech firm Arrivo, the Denver High Speed Traffic Tube project will first build a test track following the city's E-470 toll road. The system will see a variety of vehicles, both passenger and cargo using it. The technology uses a combination of magnetic levitation and electrics to propel cars at speeds of up to 200 miles per hour. If successful, Arrivo could potentially expand to connect with Denver's current transportation infrastructure. The company was founded by Hyperloop One co-founder and former SpaceX engineer, Brogan Ben Brogan.